let's do logarithms. So on logarithms, hey, what do you know, Mr. Blue? You gave us the exact same steps because yes, the process for doing logarithms is going to be exactly the same. However, I was a little bit nicer to you when we did logarithms because this, do you guys remember we did the table of values, right? Remember we did table of values for those? And that's how we started the class. And you guys could do them, basically. But logarithms, I'm like, you know what? We haven't talked about logarithms, so don't, let's not you worry about a table of values. All I want you guys to think about logarithms, Sheldon, is to know that the exponential and the logarithmic are parent graphs of each other, or I'm sorry, inverse graphs of each other. So the graph is going to look something like this. And all I really wanted you guys to know was that in its parent graph form, you have a x-intercept at 1 equals 0. And really, depending on what the base was, that just kind of tells you how sharp the curve is going to be. But the parent graph should look like this, roughly. It's a sketch, really. Wait, always? Always, unless there is like a number y equals log base b of x. As long as it looks like in this format, b is going to affect how sharp the graph curves, right? Or how wide it goes. However, it's always going to cross at 1, 0. Just like this. If I said y equals a to the, or I'm sorry, y equals b to the x, that graph always crosses at, that graph always looks like this. Always. always. It's never going to cross at a different value. However, the shape of it could be different. Like, for instance, if I say this is 100, then the graph's going to go like this. If I say that's 1 half, then the graph's going to go like that. So the shape of it will be different, but it's always going to cross at 0. Why? Because what is any number raised to the 0 power? 1. So it doesn't matter what b is. It's always going to cross at 1. Uh, right now, I'm not asking you guys to worry about that with logarithms. So the way that we found out to do if it's really sharp or not for exponential was to use a table of values. Right? You plotted points, and that's how we determined if it was sharp or grit. For logarithms right now, I'm not really concerned. I'm not going to be concerned with the table. I just want you guys to understand what the general format of the graph looks like. Okay? That's why I was saying I was kind of easy to you guys. I left you off the hook. I just said, hey, sketch what the shape of the graph is. Because um, once we learn about logarithms, you'll learn how to do a table. But for right now, just know what the shape of the graph looks like and know that it graphs that, crosses that 1 comma 0 when it's in that format. Um, so now we, so we graph the parent graph. Now let's identify the transformations. So now we have plus 5, which is now going to shift the graph 5 units left. And plus 3 is going to do? up 3. So now, guys, there's only one point I showed you for this, 1 comma 0. So let's go 5 units left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And let's go 3 units up, 1, 2, 3. Do you guys see what I did? So all I'm doing is taking the exact same graph and shifting it 5 units left and 3 units up. However, it is very important to also recognize, um, identify the asymptotes. When we have an asymptote here, this asymptote is vertical. That's where the graph approaches. It approaches a vertical asymptote. Over there, it approaches a horizontal asymptote. So if I move my graph five units to the left, I also need to move my asymptote five units to the left. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. I'm sorry? <laughs> so it's always going to be on the zero. On the y axis, oh, yes. Zero. The asymptote is always at the y axis. And on that one, the other graph is on the x axis? Correct. Yep, correct. Oh, okay. Now, so if I'm moving it though 5 units to the left, I've got to move the asymptote. I already moved everything else, and then I just graph. Now remember, the graph approaches that asymptote. That's where we like to draw it. And it's not going to touch it. OK? And boom, done. Now you got your graph. That easy. It's a sketch, right? It's not exact. If it was exact, we would have to use a table and figure out how sharp the curve is. It's just a sketch, OK? Um, but it's a pretty accurate sketch. 
Now, the last thing is identify the domain range. So remember, domain was the set of all x values. So here, you guys can see that the domain went infinitely that way, infinitely that way. So the domain, how far to the left does this graph go? Oh, negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, it's only going to go as far as the asymptote. So the domain is from negative 5. Well, how far to the right does it go? Infinity. Infinity. Range, how far low does this graph go? Negative infinity. How far high is it going to go? Negative infinity. I mean infinity. Infinity. It's, it, it's increasing very slightly, but as it goes to the right, it's still getting higher. So negative infinity to infinity. Done. See how easy that is? Yeah. See, math can be your friend.